This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There was a very huge righteous man. His name was Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. And he said that it's a dangerous thing to say Torah. To teach others is a risky thing. Be careful, he's saying. So, and I can tell you one thing about how I see that really there is a risk in it because the Torah, the wisdom that we received from heaven, from Hashem, been given to us with a purpose. And the purpose is that we will use the wisdom of the Creator to overpower our evil, evil inclination. So, when we're coming to learn Torah, our evil inclination is preparing himself, wearing his armors, carrying his weapons, and uh, he's trying to protect himself from the power of the Torah. So now, when you sit in front of the book, it's still one-on-one, -on -one, you and your inclination. But when there is a crazy person like me that is choosing for himself to stand in front of 30 people, 40 people, and online another few thousands of people, all of those inclinations with their weapons <laughs> holding against me and I need to defeat them all. That's the danger of a person that chooses to f teach Torah because he will face all of the negativity and all of the foreign thoughts and all of the, all of the twisted methods that the evil inclination of his students that, uh, that are coming to protect their possession, they're trying to protect the treasures of your souls. But the Creator gave me a gift and He took away my fear for me. So I'm throwing myself to the depths of the sea with no doubt and I'll help you tonight and in the future to come to defeat completely your evil inclination and to come clean to be free people from your sadness and from your despair. And I'll give you a few advice tonight that you will understand that are very powerful and will give you a big strengthening for the future to come. There is something very unique in our souls. Our souls are eternal. And when you're connecting yourself to your soul, and soon we're going to speak about it, and going to understand how exactly a person can do that, He's connecting himself to an endless source of wisdom, to the infinity itself. And usually a person, he's got only a certain amount of money in his bank. Even if it's a lot, there is an amount, there are numbers in the, on the papers, on the computer screen. Certain number and that's it. And more than that, he can't have health, years, days certain amount of wisdom, certain amount of books that he read. Everything in the physical world holds a certain amount. But your soul is endless. And when the person is connecting himself to his inner wisdom, to the source of his own life, he is actually making it possible for himself in every situation to have a different tool in front of every obstacle to know what will be the right advice, even if he never learned about that issue, even if he never prepared himself for that kind of situation. Inside of our soul there is an endless spring of life. That is the source of life. And this is something that we can fill buckets on buckets from. We can bring out water that not only going to purify ourselves and going to strengthen us and give us power. On top of that, except of that, we have the ability to water the world with the water of faith, with the pure water of our unique souls. 
For that, a person needs to work on himself to understand how he really built. We know that a person's body function on an energy, on source of energy. And we know that the heart is part of the system that runs the blood and the oxygen in the body. And we know that the brain is working and all the nerves are connected to the brain. And we know that the spine and the bones and the blood and the veins and the, the skin, every organ in our body got a certain mission. But the secret of our existence, the essence of our life is spiritual. It doesn't sit in the heart. It doesn't sit in the brain. It sits somewhere else. Usually people, after four days without drinking, they're gonna die. But you have people that survived after weeks without drinking. People after certain weeks won't be able to continue without eating. But we saw people that almost 100 days lived without eating. And on Moshe Rabbeinu it's written that for 120 days he was alive without drinking and without eating. And you'll have more stories from other cultures on people that were fasting and were torturing themselves and they were not eating and not drinking. Usually you're gonna say after one minute, two minutes and a half, a person will die if he won't breathe. But there were people that drowned and lost their breath for more than an hour and suddenly recovered and came back to life. And you would think to yourself that if the brain doesn't receive oxygen for a certain while, but there are so many stories. So on that story we're going to define it as a health med medical miracle. And that story is a very unique and, and rare situation. All of those rare situations being gathered to a very nice bouquet of the real secrets of creation, of the secret of how we've been created. We have an inner source of power. Sometimes, let's say for an example, in a meeting, in a class, in an exam, you try to answer a certain question, you try to present a certain topic, and you find yourself stuck you don't know what to say. You lost your mind. Suddenly everything is blank inside. And you can't remember what to do. And then you close your eyes. You focus. You breathe. And the answer is coming from within. Where is that inside? Where is that point of wisdom that is lifting and bringing up to the surface an inner wisdom that is hidden. Sometimes you don't remember certain situations and suddenly they're flushing you and washing your eyes and you can see half of your childhood. You can see days on days in front of your eyes like a movie. Every detail you can smell and remember smells from where all of that wisdom coming from. It's coming from your soul. And our souls are not only so sophisticated and wise, they're also ancient. And we don't know in how many lifetimes we use that soul. We don't know how much information and wisdom is hidden and treasured inside of our poor bodies. Inside of you there is a godly soul. And the way to connect yourself to that godly soul, it's to have faith in yourself. It's to understand first of all that really you are capable of making wonders, of bringing out buckets of pure water from inside, from an inner hidden source, the sea of souls. Because your soul, even though that it's only one soul, who is my soul in the sea of souls? Your soul is connected. If someone will tell you, I'm taking your finger away from you, you're going to say no. You don't know, it's only your finger, it's not you. No, 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 my finger is mine, and please mind your own business. But it's a small finger. Why you care so much? Because my finger is me. In a certain moment when you feel pain, you feel pain in your fingertip. You feel pain because your finger is you. It's true, your soul is divided in a way from the rest of the souls, but only in the edge, 
only in the tip of your soul, when it's dressing your physical body, but in the roots of your soul, you are a branch that is connected to other branches thicker than you. And that branch is also connected to a thicker and thicker until we're getting into the depths of human race, to our holy ancestors, to the father and mothers that built the faith in the world. And we, by connecting ourselves to our inner wisdom, we can enjoy the wisdom of those righteous ones. When you're connecting yourself to your source, so suddenly when you, let's say, run a business and now you have a certain amount of money, but now if there are few partners in that business, you have a larger amount of money because all of your bank accounts became partners. The treasure developed, expanded, only because that you decided to cooperate. The ancestors and the righteous ones of the earliest generations, they already accepted on themselves to be partners with us. But when we are accepting on ourselves to reconnect ourselves to our spiritual roots, we become partners with them. And then by the merit of our ancestors, by the inner connection that we have to our souls, we can access to ancient wisdom, even more ancient than the days of the creation, to the place that is above time, above space, to the endless time of before creation, to eternity, to infinity, to that place that we were one, with the Creator, with no dividings, with no colors, with no shapes, with no measurements, with no sizes, with no weights. Everything was one. And you, by focusing in your inner channel, you can find yourself enjoying from that spiritual bounty. And it is not a fantasy. It's reality. It's reality that people are scared to look at. It's reality that people are terrified to deal with because people rather to live comfortable life, live life of comfort, to, you know, to satisfy themselves with their sandwich, with their food, in their house, with their business, and not to go to too many you know, gigantic adventures in their lifetime. No, I rather to, to keep my, my, my old habits, and to, to find comfort in my hobbies, to be in touch with my friends. But the truth is that every one of us is carrying inside of his own self a very hard and, and sharp pain of, of disappointment from life. No matter how much we achieved in many aspects of our life, some of us made a lot of money, some of us made a lot of friends, some of us have amazing relationships, beautiful children, wonderful life experiences and wisdom that we bought in life. But still, inside of us, there is a certain feeling that something is missing. This is why our eyes are still open. This is why we're still seeking for something. But no matter which amazing view you see today and hosting yourself in the most expensive and with the best view hotel in the world and going to the most foreign and furthest islands and enjoy, enjoying the world and visiting in the Holy Land of Israel, you go back home after that fantastic vacation, after signing the biggest deal in the world, and something is still empty. I was standing in front of, in front of the sea on the way from, San Fran from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and the view is gorgeous, it's beautiful. You cannot describe that look of what it you can see with your eyes, those small islands and the waves that are breaking to the shore and the wild animals that are swimming. And you can see the dolphins, you can see the sea lions, you can see amazing birds, you see the nature in, 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 in his greatness. But what can you do with that? Basically nothing. So you're going to take another picture and another picture with yourself and with your wife and with your children. And now what? You leave the nature over there and you go back to your life. You go back to your car. You go back to traffic. You go back to your business, to the smoke and to the clock 
and to the time, and to the alarm, and to the morning obligations, and to the rest of your life, that it's very hard to carry the beach, and the view, and the sky, and the clouds, and the sea lions with you to the work, and to the job that is on your shoulders, that yoke that you're obligated to keep. Why? Because the nature that we're observing at, that we're looking at, is still physical. But when from that view, you will take something into your soul, when you're going to take the wisdom that you buy in life, from those sights, from those amazing views, from those deals, you're going to take sparks of faith into your soul. You will see the hand of the Creator runs the world. You will understand that it's the supervision of the Creator on your life that brought you to stand in that place and to sign that deal and to meet that person and to give that hug to that beloved friend of yours. You're going to carry all of those experiences inside of your own soul and your soul will shine from your life experience and it won't be a bunch of pictures in your computer or in your mobile or in your Facebook or in your Twitter account it will be something that will walk with you forever that's that can happen only when your heart is connected in a spiritual way to your life experiences only when you are trying to think, what do I feel when I see that view? Not what that view means. Okay, sky, okay, sea, okay, mountains. It's empty. What do I feel about the sea? What do I sense from those waves? What is my inner inspiration from that view, from those clouds that are moving, from that flight that I took on that jet, and I was going from one place to the other, those stores, what they meant for me? What is the spiritual essence of the creation? When a person receives those holy eyes, he can take so much more from every life experience, more than those snapshots. He can take the Creator with Him because we are connected to reality not only through our physicality, not only through our senses, through our physical eyes, physical ears. You can hear things within. You can see things in your mind. Open your mind. The way to do that, like I said before, first step is to believe in your spiritual power. To understand that you're not a physical creation. You're not here for 70 years or for 80 years. You are here forever. How are we going to live forever? By living this moment forever. By connecting ourselves to the present. The name of the Creator, when we're writing Him in the ancient language, the holy language, we're writing His name with four letters. Yud, and the letter He, and then the letter Vav, and then again the letter He. When we're completing this combination, holy combination, that that is the real meaning of the name of our Creator, we are calling Him Havaya Baruch Hu. The meaning of the word Havaya means that He is with us right now in the present, that He is the present, that He is the here and now of your life. And on that understanding, you can build amazing buildings that will be stabilized by those fantastic verses that will tell you that the world contains only Hashem and that there is nothing except of Hashem. Ein od milvado. There is no one except of Him. He is those mountains. He is those waves. He is the Spirit behind those curtains of creation. He is the one that is sharing His wisdom through those masks, 
through those coverings. He is speaking to you from the sea, from the walls, from the sky, through the clouds and the birds. The real ancient righteous ones were able to understand the conversations of the palm trees. And their wisdom was talking to them through the waves and through the wind. And the weather was speaking an ancient wisdom from the ancient days of before creation. From the days of Kedem, from the days that came before of time. And when we are working on our inner awareness, connecting ourselves to our inner source of wisdom, to that endless spring of beautiful potential, we can enjoy that bounty. Those are not just words. The way to do it is simple. It's to be who that you are. In all of our life journey, we have that evil inclination that is whispering in the back of our head all of the time. You are wrong. You're disgusting. You're filthy. You're lousy. You're worthless. You're hopeless. No one cares about you. Look at yourself, at your height, at the color of your skin, at the color of your hair, at the color of your eyes. Look at your nose. You're fat. You're tall. You're short. You're skinny. You're stupid. You forgot everything. You don't remember. You're not sensitive, you're a disgrace, and on and on and on. All of those foreign thoughts are breaking your self-esteem, breaking your ability to connect yourself to who that you really are in the nature of your creation. Who you are, you are the one that the Creator made you to be. Who you cannot be, someone else. You cannot be taller, you cannot be more bright, you cannot be darker, you cannot be wiser, you cannot have a better memory, you cannot work and change your nose, nose even if you're going to go to a plastic surgery that sometimes can be good. If you're going to really be relieved by making that surgery, maybe it's a good thing for you to do. But the truth is that you, the real you, will always going to stay you. If you hate yourself, a surgery won't make you love yourself. If you have foreign, negative, sad thoughts of despair, no change in life gonna change it because you're gonna walk with your mind toward your new house, to that next community, to the next synagogue, to the next meeting, to your next job. You are carrying your inner cargo with you no matter where you go. So the only way to set ourselves free is to come back to who that we are and to understand how precious we are because we are handmade by the Creator Himself. So no one can really criticize you. And when you're opening yourself to criticism, you're opening yourself to thoughts that are against the will of the Almighty. Because He, with His wisdom, after thinking and calculating and doing everything that was supposed to be done before of creating you and bringing you down to this world, He, with His wisdom, made you to be who that you are. So who going to be that person? Even if it was your mother or your father or it were your siblings or it is your soulmate that fell into that trap of criticizing you and judging you, and even if you unfortunately learned from them and now establish those negative patterns of your own to destroy yourself on daily basis, to criticize yourself and slaughter yourself alive for no reason, no matter who you are or who he is, she is to judge you, they really don't have no permission to speak. Because they're speaking on the creation of King of all kings. That He made you short, and He made you poor, and He made you to look like you look. And to be judgmental about it, it's first of all to be ignorant. And not to understand the real purpose of creation. 
why we don't know what was the height of Abram, our ancestor, why we don't know what was the color of the hair of Sarah, his wife, the color of the eyes of Rachel Imenu, why we don't know what was the weight of Rivka, the wife of Yitzchak, because it's not important. Because if she was heavy, or if she was light, if she was tall, or if she was short, it's not important. What is important? Who, spiritually, emotionally, she was. What was his character? What was his will? What was her will? What were they doing in certain situations that presented to the world the real character of those amazing, magnificent people that are the role model for us, for the future generations? That we're going to be inspired from them to be like them? No, not at all. To be ourselves. Like that they were themselves. They would never judge each other by their look or by their wallets or by their houses. They would only look into the depths of the souls and going to try to figure out who is that treasure that is standing in front of me. Who is that fantastic person that now the Creator sent to me that I will negotiate with him, that I will make friendship with him, that I will make business with him, that I will invest with him, that I will count on him or going to be careful of him. I will try to sense the spiritual cargo of that being, of that person, of that situation, and will try to understand what is the spiritual message of my Father, of my Creator, to me through this life situation. And then you're uplifting your life to a different dimension. You can live an eternal life with the Creator under the borders of time and to be free from time because you're not late to a meeting. You have a meeting. You're not in a rush and you don't have to go to sleep. You do everything out of your inner understanding and with inner peace you go to sleep early or late. You take decisions out of your awareness, out of your free choice. And you hold that staff of life to hold the tree of life in your hand and to know how to choose while being connected to the mission of your life, to the secret of your existence, to be who that you are, a person in a mission. And do your job and fulfill your dreams and commit what the Creator wants from you to be who that He made you to be. And some of us need to be tall and beautiful and handsome and rich for their job. And some of us need to be gray and small and tiny and undercover that no one will notice that you went in and out secretly, quietly, because you have a different job. And that job is not less important than that job of that person that is on prime time in, in, in public national TV in front of 200 million people every day convincing them and talking to them. Maybe he is just a distraction for other small people much more important than him to complete their jobs with our souls and to bring us to the real purpose of our lives. And you are the only one that can tell yourself who you really are. I cannot tell you who you are. I can tell you who am I. Because I made a very long investigation about myself, so I found something about myself. I am aware to some parts of my being. But who you are, only you can tell. You know which kind of music you love. You know which books you like to read. You know which television shows you like to watch. You know what makes you cry, what makes you laugh. You know who are the people that give you strength and power, supporting you, giving you motivation to continue. And who are those ones that are draining you and sucking the essence of your life from your body and leaving you empty and despair? You know exactly who you are and you know your nature. 
Now, it sounds until now that the mission is okay to know who I am. Okay, so you can say, so I know who I am. I like to play the piano. I like to go to concerts. That's not the issue. To know who you are is only the first step. The main step is to understand that that one that is you is important for the purpose of the world. That you have a mission in life. By being who that you are, you can create and you must create. And then to execute. And then to start rolling those balls into life. And then to start making actions and to be active by the nature of your creation. If you're a musician, so to make inspiring music. And if you're an author, so to write fantastic novels and books. And if you are a videographer or if you're a lawyer, a lawyer is a problem. I don't know if... The, <laughs> but the rest of the things, for sure, you can find something good to do with. <laughs> Careful, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Must find the purpose. I have a friend that is a lawyer in Israel, and he told me, look, uh, we're, we're always talking about purpose in life, because that's my conversation. So he told me, but what I'm going to do? I'm a lawyer. What can I do? I told him, listen, you're going to be the first honest lawyer <laughs> in the history of the world. He told me, I won't be able to do that. It can't be done. So I don't know, maybe you're going to be that first lawyer, honest lawyer. If he dropped the ball, you can pick it up. Be the first honest lawyer in the universe, in the history of the world. Why not? Be so unique. Be so special. The truth is that people are scared to be who that they are. Because they have memories from the past of hurting other people of insulting other people. And some of us are very scared from who that we are, afraid of their evil inclination, not afraid of who that you really are. The truth is that you're not afraid to be who that you are. You're afraid to allow yourself to be sensitive because you're afraid to be hurt again. And you know that when you hurt, you can attack, you can fight. But the truth is that your nature is not evil, is not bad. Even if you committed horrible crimes until today, you sinned in so many ways, it doesn't make you evil. The fact that you failed enormous amount of times doesn't make you evil. It makes you to be a person that might fail thousands and thousands of times. Yes, but it doesn't make you evil. If you will confront your fears and really going to ask yourself, who am I? In my source, in the nature of my creation, who was I when I was three? Who was I when I was five? When my parents divorced, when we left that country and moved to the other one, when we left that house and moved, when I joined that group, that public school, when you're going to ask yourself, who were you really? In the essence of your being, you're going to find a very sensitive and beautiful soul. A very gentle and fragile person that lives inside of you. And that's who that you really are. Now, you might experience a lot of pain in your life. Things that made you think that the best thing for you is to hide your sensitivity and to block your emotions and not to express your thoughts and your sense of humor. People are finding it today hard to laugh, hard to smile, hard to walk in the streets, choosing outfits and clothes because by, um, that will be based on other people's opinion, cannot express the real selves of them because they're always afraid of criticism, of opinions of other people. So maybe those decisions that you took as a child or as a young person or maybe even until yesterday were the right decisions to protect yourself. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you should continue defending yourself like that also today. Maybe today if you will check that issue with eyes of truth Eyes that are connected to reality. Maybe today you have the ability to be more of yourself 
and less scared like you were before. Maybe today you can start changing and maybe even just by making one step toward your true self, toward the one that you know that you are from within, and maybe that step will give you so much comfort and so much happiness that it will bring you to such amazing and inspiring places in your life that you will suddenly feel inner peace, completion of your true being. You will feel good with yourself. Instead of hating yourself on your mistakes, you're going to start understanding that they happened to you and took place in your life for a reason, with a purpose. And even if that purpose is only to humble you and humiliate you and teach you that you are not the center of the universe and that there are more people around you, that also have hearts and also have emotions and built inside of you a structure of a sensitive person, of a more gentle person that is able today to communicate in a way that more people will be related to and more people today can understand you and you can also uh, today understand more people with certain issues, issues that are similar to yours. And the Creator took you in a very unique path to bring you to that point, that in that point you will connect yourself to your true self. Stop hiding. Stop being that one that people will think that you are. Just be yourself, the one that He made you to be. After thinking and judging and calculating and planning and observing and preparing made you to be that handmaid that you are. That unique body that you have contains a unique spiritual soul that is channeled to the source of souls in heaven. And by being who that you are, you can compose new songs, new music. You can reveal new novels, new stories that will change the life of human race for good. You can deliver amounts of light, not that are only huge and gigantic and large, are also unique and no one else can bring them down to the world except of you. You are who that you are and no one in the world can replace you. No one can do your job. No one can make your family be happy like that you can. No one can make your friends smile like that smile that you're going to smile to them when you're going to meet them in the next time. If I'm going to smile to them, they might smile as well. But it won't be the same smile that they will feel happiness to see you that you are smiling. You are that one that for years they were hoping to see you in a better place, in a nicer place. When you're going to smile to them, when you're going to tell them, you know, today I'm a little bit better, they will feel much, much better inside of themselves. And it's only because that they really care about you. Even if you stop believing in that, try to rethink about your life. Try to understand how many people that are surrounding you really care about you and it can be even just that person that works in the grocery store in the next street. It might be even him that he has that point of truth inside of him that he will be really happy to see that you are okay today. That's why yesterday he asked you what's going on and he told you that he feels that you're not like you were yesterday and he really cares about you. And if you're really going to be a little bit more of yourself and you're going to feel a little bit better about who that you are and your mission in life, you're going to smile a little bit more, he's going to sense it. He's going to smile to you. He's going to recognize that uplifting feeling that you have. And he's going to tell you, Whoa, I see that you're different today. What happened? Tell me, what happened yesterday? Something good? Tell me your good news. If in that moment you will be able to express your spiritual feeling, Yes, I am more of myself today. 
I feel more connected. Express yourself. Don't repeat my words. Say what that you're going to feel after that you're going to develop in your life. Tell him what you really feel. He will enjoy from your development. He will receive from those pure water that are washing you from inside and they will inspire him to start finding his true self and to grow in his journey and to find his inner point and his inner spiritual connection because you can relate to those ones that are surrounding you in ways that even me even someone that will be right more righteous than me wiser than me richer than me more sophisticated than I he won't be able to access your friends he won't be able to sit with those people that are walking with you hand in hand all of your life journey he won't have the way to communicate and inspiring them. And you can. And that's your mission. To be who that you are in your place. You don't need to uproot yourself and to move to the Holy Land. You don't need to quit that job and to go and learn in a Beit Midrash, only Bible, Talmud and ancient scripts from the past. No. You need to ask yourself, who am I and what is my mission and the creator will talk to you from your inside and from inside you might feel okay so i want to go to the holy land so i want to learn from those ancient books it might be the answer for you but it might be that it won't be the answer of your best friend your best friend still need to work on his business to learn how to respect his wife, how to spend more time with his children, how to work in his garden and not to call the gardener to do all of his job for him. Maybe that labor in your backyard will make you a better person. Only if you're going to really listen to the voice of your soul why certain things happen to you, why certain people complain on certain issues about you, why certain things never works for you, why you're stuck in so many aspects of your life. Try to pay attention to the truth, not to blame, not to judge, not to criticize, and not to try to make a radical change. Try to bring the Creator into your life. Don't be in a rush to go up to heaven. Life can be fun. Stay with us. We're here until 120. We want to live long life and to bring the Creator into our houses. Not to run from our houses to the Creator. The Creator lives within. He lives inside of you, inside of your body. There is a holy soul through that soul, the Creator is transferring and bringing, delivering life into your body, into your environment, into the circles that are surrounding you. Connect yourself to your inner source and you will find the Creator. The way to do it is to connect yourself to the truth. Which truth? The divine truth? The truth of the Bible? The truth of the righteous ones? No to your honesty, to be a person of truth, not to justify yourself all of the time, not to make up covering stories all of the time, not to tell tales to everyone, not to try to sell all of the time, just to be who that you are. If he's calling and asking, do you want to go? If you don't want to go, don't ever say yes. Say no, I don't want to go, I'm sorry. I don't feel like it. But why? They're waiting and you don't know. And what's going to happen? And what's going to be? I don't feel like it. And if he won't talk to you ever, it's his free choice. Trust me, if he won't be your friend because you don't want to go, he was never your friend. Your friend will love you more when you will be yourself. When you will find yourself, you will find your real friends. You will find real, solid, good relationships. You will find your real business. You're going to find the real investments in life. You're going to find what the, the Creator put in your plate. 
you're going to recognize the signs of the Creator, the wisdom and the message of the Almighty to you, and you will find your path. Like the fish that knows how to find the path in the sea, like the animals that knows how to find the path in the forest, in the field, in the desert, where there are no roads, no GPS, no Google Maps, no iMaps, nothing, only them and reality. And they're finding their ways. And you can find yours. But first of all, you need to drop the phone for a second. You need to drop the technology for a minute. You need to connect yourself to your inner voice, to your true self, and to listen and then to follow your inner guidings that will lead you toward a better future of being positive about yourself and finding the real purpose of your life, to be happy and to make other people happy. Also to be protected and to protect other people. The description of our future doesn't need to be only pink and bright blue. You can also make sure to be healthy and to protect yourself from the winter and from financial issues in the future. You should be connected to reality. We're not connecting ourselves to a fantastic, divine world of fairies. We're talking about connecting ourselves to reality and structuring and designing our life based on our real good will to succeed and to enjoy life of prosperity, but not to let fears and, and negativity run our lives, because then you will never going to find comfort and happiness, even if you have all the money in the world, even if you have few properties of your own, comfort you won't find in them. Even if fear will take you to a long journey that will seem to other people like a very successful path, you will know the truth that fears controls your life and you're terrified and you're worried and you can't sleep and you don't know what to do with money, with family, with properties, with social, uh, with, with, with security and pension for, pension, pension for the future, with all of the, the, the medical insurance that you can have in the world, scared. Every sneeze is reminding you of that damn sickness. Oh, that I won't have cancer. Oh, that he won't have cancer. Oh, stop. Relax. Connect yourself to your soul and the energy of your soul will heal you. Will give you strength to deal with every life challenge. Will give you wisdom to know exactly what to eat and what to drink and when to sleep. You will be aware to your body. You will be aware to your energy, to your pulse. You will understand the nature of your creation and you're going to understand the inner guidings of the Creator to know exactly in which way to walk and to which direction and when to stop and to hold yourself back and when to run and speed up with all the power with no fear in your eyes. All of those fantastic concepts are installed inside of your system. It's you. It's your potential with no connection to me. In a few minutes, I'm out. And you will stay alone with your souls. Start connecting yourselves to your true selves. Be who that you are. Express your thoughts and your emotions in the right measure. Think with yourselves and not against yourselves. Work out of love and positivity, and not based on fears and anxieties. Thank you very much. My name is Dror Moshe Kasuto, and I'm the co-founder of Emuna Project Inc. This is a non-profit organization established here in the U.S. I born in Jerusalem almost 40 years from now. 
maybe some of you think that I'm young, but I already feel my back. So, uh, thank God. And my wife and I did tshuva when we were soldiers in the IDF, in the Israeli army. And we started our tshuva process and decided to change our life and to do tshuva, to become believers, to believe in the Creator and to keep Torah and Mitzvot as every Jewish should. And we're very happy that the Creator took us to a very unique journey of not only learning for ourselves, just also providing and sharing advice to many, many people along the way. And I learned in many yeshivot for many years and lived a very firm and religious life. And today the Creator opened my eyes to understand that through my life wisdom, the wisdom that I bought in life, I can inspire many other people. And when I realized that I've been gifted and blessed in that thing, I dropped everything else, took my family, and we're on the roads. So for the last three years, we're traveling in the U.S., and we've been also in Europe in few locations, giving lectures. Mainly our work is online. We're reaching out to more than 50,000 individuals every month. It's a huge number, and for sure, compared to the place that we began. In the beginning, my first YouTube videos was, were having 21 views, 27 views. When we reached 45, I was dizzy, I was so excited. 45 people, watch that class. And today we have thousands and thousands of views on all social media outlets and thousands of followers and friends around the world that are thirsty and, uh, and desiring that we will come to their hometowns and to their communities, thank God. So I'm calling you and asking you as my friends that you will admit right now that I helped you with that evil, evil inclination that uh, you have inside of yourselves. And remember that favor that I made with you to give you strength and power to defeat it and to overpower on your fears and anxieties. And remember that with your support and your help, we can reach out to many, many others and to help them as well to find inspiration and hope in life, to build their houses, to have peace in their houses, and to find their true selves. So you can find us online, our website called emuna.com, emuna with an H, emuna means faith, emuna is faith in Hashem, emuna.com, and YouTube, Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, and the rest of, uh, of social media outlets you can find us. Thank you very much. Hashem will bless you with much happiness and success and that all of your prayers and requests will be answered. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.